Hello and welcome back to this series of uh, videos on uh, idea scripting, uh, creating an idea scripting dialogue. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the checkboxes. So, in this demonstration, if you remember from the, the intro video, I had a list of different tests and with a select all. So, ultimately, if you're creating this dialogue, what this would be is sort of some kind of a uh, for a bunch of different audit tests and the user can go in and select which test they actually want us to use. They don't have to use all of them, they could use one of them or they could use all of them. So we'll go in and we'll create that in the dialogue. So first off is I'm going to create a group box. So the group box is going to hold the different uh, series of checks because if you remember I had a series of tests for uh, accounts payable and some for uh, journal vouchers. So I'm going to just Grab a group, make create a group box, and the group box. I'm going to change the name, and I'm going to change select AP tests. So these are group box for the AP tests, and then I'll just make this large enough. So on the left, I want it at 10. Or actually, it's because it's a group box. I want it not necessarily 10 because I want it to fit around everything. Uh, the width, I'm going to use uh, 300. Make it nice and wide so you can add on additional tests if you want. The top, what do I want the top to be? Around 70. Yeah, that looks good. We'll make it height 32 or so. So we want to make it high enough for the different tests. So select test. So we'll just use this. And basically, this is just a holder for the different uh, checkboxes. Now, I'm not going to bother changing the ID because I'm not actually doing anything with this. It's just really something that's more uh, for the visualization of the dialogue, and it doesn't really interact with the dialogue. So now I'm going to add on the first checkbox. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to just change the name. So this would be the select all. And I'm going to change the ID. I'm going to call this check AP select all. Um, and here I can go in and change this. So maybe I want it left sort of 14, make it look good. Width, probably the width is good there. Uh, height, I can keep around numbers so it's easy. And height is 14, so that's good. So that's the first one. Now I want to create three others. So I can just go in. Gonna, whoops, I didn't want to select text. If you do anything, you make any errors, you can just hit, sorry, make sure it's highlighted and select delete to get rid of it. So I'm gonna check the checkbox, grab one in, grab two, grab three. And one thing you can also do too is they have different functionalities here for, you know, aligning the items. So if you want to align the middles, uh, make the same width, height, same horizontal spacing and so on. You can do that. Uh, oops. And if you do something like that and you want to get it back, you just hit the control Z and so on. Or you can do the fine tuning with the positions. Lots of times I'll do the fine tuning with the position here. So I know that the top is, I want to make sure the top is all for 80. You know, these are lined up. You know, I could probably tweak it. I could probably figure out the, the different uh, widths and everything like that, but I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm going to just name these. The first one I'm just going to call test one. You know, and in real life you'd probably have, you know, you'd do duplicate testing, gap testing, something out like this. And I'll you know, test two, test three. Now the next thing is important is the ID. So I'm going to change the ID, and I'm going to call this checkbox AP test. Sorry, test one. I'm just going to copy this and I'll do the same thing here. I'll call this test two and I'll call this test three. And if you're using the same ID with different numbers at the end, there's a really easy way to go in and select all of these at the same time. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to do it one at a time. So that's for our AP test. Let's do the same thing. For our JV, and we're calling that uh, select JV tests. And again, here 
We want this at seven. We had, was it the width 300? Uh, height is 29. And the top is 107. So that looks good right like that. Okay, in order to speed up this, uh, this a bit, I've created the uh, JV tests because they're created exactly the same way as I did the AP tests. As you see, I created three tests and they're all named either test one, two, three, and also the ID are uh, test one. Actually here, I forget to do test two and test three. So having the IDs uh, in sequential order uh, is actually very important and I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So right now, let's just go look at, see what it looks like when we open it up. And here we go, test one, two, three. So here we're just selecting randomly. It's not actually doing anything right now. We got we still got to write the code to do that. But you can see here how we could have a list of tests for accounts payable, and then the user gets to select which test they want to run on the file. Okay, so if we go back into the file, so now let's go write the code. So what we want to do is if we go in and do either take the select all for the AP test or the JV test, I want to go in and either select all of these or deselect all of these. And how I'll do that is remember I get the ID, check AP selection all. So here, remember if we click on anything, it comes to case two. So now I'm going to say case and it was check AP select all. So if I go in and select this checkbox here, I'll end up running this code. So the next thing I want to do is check to see if it's been set or not. And it's easy enough to do. Uh, I can use the rubber uh, in the first or the second video where I was explaining the different actions. There's one or different functions of the dialog. There's one called dialog value. So this will return what is in the checkbox. And how I access that is I can just go see if dialog value, and I'll just use the, for this item here, true. So I'm just going if true, so that means if it's been selected, then I'm gonna create a variable called check value equals one else check value equals zero and if. So I'm creating here uh, an integer. And I tried doing this with a Boolean and for whatever reason it didn't work. Uh, so I guess it's gonna be an integer. Not too sure why. I would think a Boolean would work also. Okay, so check value one and zero. So the reason I'm doing this is now I'm gonna add in some additional code to go in and check each one of these. Remember these are check AP test one, two, and three. So that's sequential. And how I can access that is I can just do a for loop. And I just go for i equals one, two, three, next i. And here again, I'll use dialog value. And for each one of these, Remember, it started. They started each with check AP test. I'll just copy that over. And I'm gonna get rid of the one, but I can do I. So what this does is it loops through, and I'll change this to check AP test one, two, and three. And then from that, I will just go check. Sorry, value, and I gotta add up the I. So if I don't do that right now, it'll give me an error saying the I is not defined. So I gotta make sure it's defined. So I'll do i as integer. Now let's go in and see if this works. I'll just save this. And here we go. There we go. Easy enough. So I'm just gonna do that for the JVs. Uh, actually what I'll just do is I'm just gonna copy this. Oops. And instead of AP, I'll just change this to JV. JV and JV. Save it. Let's go run it. And now this works also. You can see here I can select either one, select all, does that, deselects them all, and so on. So you can, uh, it's an easy way, especially if there's multiple tests, that the user can go in and select all or uh, 
deselect all. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next video I'm going to add in the radio buttons. And then the video after that I'm going to add in the dictionary. Not the dictionary, sorry, the calendar. Anyways, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks.